Hello my amazing artists! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a colograph. A colograph is a way of printing, but it's by adding layers of something. So we are going to be making a picture out of a cereal box or a cracker box, and then we're going to add layers to make our picture. When we're done, we're going to cover it with foil and color it with marker to make a print. Now a print, as you know, is where we have, we make the stamp or the printing plate and we cover it with ink. This time we're gonna be covering it with marker and then we are going to press the paper down and lift it to make a print. What's cool about prints is you can do it over and over using different color combinations and each one is unique, but yet you're using the same printing plate. So let's get started. Now with this colograph, you're going to be able to make rubbings and marker prints. But first, let me show you how we make a colograph. Okay, what you're gonna need to make a colograph print first is you're going to need several different supplies. But the, one of the main things we're gonna use is an old cracker box. So something like this. We're gonna open the cracker box and we're going, you could use a cereal box, just anything that is this thin cardboard um, because we're going to cut it apart. So that means you're also going to need scissors and glue. And poor glue has been through a lot, but um, that's what you're going to need so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut I pulled my box, my cracker box apart at the seams and I'm gonna cut it in half. Now with the first half, I'm going to use it as my printing plate. You can hear my foil, you're gonna need foil later. Now for my printing plate, I just want something that's about the same ratio as my paper. So I want it you know how my paper is kind of up and down, a little bit skinnier, and then a little bit wider on one side. I'm going to cut it apart, cut it so that I have one that's about a little bit skinnier and a little bit wider on another side. Now, you don't have to do that. You could have a square. You could have, and I'm just going to try to kind of clean up those edges. You could have a circle. You can make your printing plate whatever shape you want it to be. Now you can see that I made a robot last time because, well, first, because we made robots last week and it was kind of fun. So I thought I'd try with a robot and I just used squares and rectangles. And I basically cut out the scraps. Now for this one, I'm gonna do something a little bit more organic. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make a fish. So I'm going to use my other side of the box and I'm going to cut out a fish body and maybe give it a tail. Now I need to remember, and I'm telling myself this more than anything, I need to remember that my fish has to be smaller than my printing plate. So. Put that on there. I'll move my paper over for now. And mm, let's kind of clean that up a little bit. So I might just keep cutting until I have the shape that I want. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now I'm going to turn mine over like this. It doesn't really matter what size you use. When I made my robot, I liked it all to be kind of clean looking, but I want you to be able to see, it's kind of hard to see the difference between this brown paper and the black ground brown paper. So I'm gonna turn mine over just so you can see my fish. I'm gonna turn them like that. Okay, so then I'm going to use my scraps because I'm gonna do smaller things like my fish needs a top fin. So I think that this is a really good shape for a fin. 
So I might give it kind of like a wiggle. See how I'm wiggling my arm, not the paper. Well, or you can wiggle your paper. And I'm going to put it down like that. Or I could turn it over so you guys can see it better. There's the top fin. I might kind of arrange it a little bit before I glue things on, just so I can make sure that I have it the way I want. And then this might be the side fin, and maybe I'm going to give it a little bit of a wiggle too. I'm gonna wiggle, like a wiggle the paper, or I could wiggle my my scissors. And ooh, I love that point. Kind of more like an angelfish. So maybe I make that more exaggerated. Put it down like that so you can start to see where I'm adding on top. Now with a colograph, there's not a general rule of how many layers you can have, but I would say no more than three. And I need a fisheye. Now I can break my rule because rules are meant to be broken. And because I want that fisheye to really stand out, I'm going to, still can't get my eye perfect. I'm going to put that down and then maybe put an eye in like that. Um, maybe he needs a smile. So, oops, I messed all that up. I have all of these little pieces that I've been cutting. So what if I use some of my scraps and I turn it into a smile? Or does it need fish lips? Ooh, fish lips would be kind of fun. Now I think I'm gonna do a smile. So I'm gonna take this part of my scraps, clean it up a little bit and shorten it up. And I'm going to make this the smile. And then I think I need some bubbles. So I'm going to cut some circles. Now you could use something like, oh, a marker cap to trace. If I'm having trouble, let me move that down. If I'm having trouble cutting a circle, I could trace something that's about the size that I want. Maybe do a few of those. And I might have a bigger bubble and smaller bubbles. And do that. So now I have three circles. Tear that piece off. And I'm going to cut out my circle so it's easier if I have a smaller piece of paper. So once I have my fish the way I like it, I am going to glue it down very carefully using just a tiny bit of glue. So I'm going to do the top pieces first. So I'm going to just add a little bit of glue and put it down. I'll do this to all my little pieces. Once I have all my pieces glued down, check it, kind of give it the dump test. Um, my next step, you don't have to do this. If you don't have a paintbrush around the house, that you can use just your finger. But I think it helps to keep the foil down if you brush a little bit of glue around it. So I'm just going to, this is kind of a fun part, I'm going to drizzle some glue, don't go crazy. 
over my Colograph print plate and I'm just going to brush the glue down. Now I don't have to get it all. I'm just, oops, let's move that eye around a little bit. This can kind of help keep everything in place, keep the foil in place. And I'm going to lightly brush things. You can see that my stuff is not quite glued down yet. So I'm going to lightly brush all this glue down. Now once I have that done, don't forget to brush, wash this brush out or not that it'll be ruined, but it will be hard to use next time. You'll have to clean it even better. I'm going to take my piece of foil, it's going to get a little wrinkled, that's okay, and I am going to lay it down. Then it doesn't matter what side you use for your foil, so I'm going to put my fish or my printing plate face down on the foil. Kind of push it down really good. Then I'm going to flip it over and I am going to gently rub with my finger the spot, rub my fish. And I'm going to kind of smooth it out, starting in the middle, smooth out my printing plate, try to get those wrinkles really good. And then, once I kind of have it smoothed out, turn it back over, and I'm going to fold over these ends. I'm going to fold the top and the bottom first. doesn't mean if it's the short top or the fat top, the wide top. Then, I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to fold the, these top and bottom down. Now, I'm going to show you my secret fold for folding the corners. So that it doesn't show, I'm just going to fold the corner in a little triangle. This is not necessary, but it makes me feel good to have crisp, clean corners. So that's what I do. Fold it in the corners. Okay, now for the fun part. You can take a piece of white computer paper. We all have computer paper at home. It's really good because it's nice and thin. And put it over your printing plate. Then take a few naked crayons. Now naked crayons are those broken crayons and we just pull the paper off of them. Pull it all around until all the paper comes off. It gets stuck. Just kind of scratch it with your fingernail and keep going. And until all the paper comes off. We all have those broken crayons and they still have life in them. Pull that off, and then I can start to rub with my naked crayon. Um, then you could do kind of an ombre style where, you know, I'm going to take my green and rub it into the yellow so I can start to see the green with the yellow, and they overlap, and then blue at the bottom. I've got to make sure to hold the printing plate in one hand while I rub. I'm going to get this top a little bit too with the blue because it's probably hard to see on camera. And if it moves, it's okay. You just hold it down and keep rubbing. And then you get a cool, you get your, it's really a relief. You get your relief um, rubbing like this. Okay, so now that I have my Colograph covered, my Colograph pr printing plate covered with foil, I'm ready to start my marker print. Now I am I'm going to pick out a few colors that show up well that I'm going to use for my Colograph print. Uh, remember, they need to be washable markers, so they will say washable on them. These work the best and show up the best when you're printing. I'll throw in a purple in there and I'm going to start coloring my Colograph, my um, printing plate. Now I um, have an orange fish. Now when you are coloring it's super important that you color all of it so you don't leave any white space. So the one way that I do that really well 
is I actually turn my marker and I use the side of it. This helps me color fast and I may use the relief of the print printing plate to kind of guide my marker. Don't want to go out of the lines though. And I'm going to color very carefully. It takes a while, but it's so worth it to have it colored really well. your color graph colored. It does take a little bit of time but it is so worth it because it looks really great when it's all colored and covered with color. You can see a few spots where it's not sticking because it was wet because I've already made one print and I want to of making another because that's the great thing about printing. You can do lots of different, um, you can do it lots of different times. So now what I need is a, I'm going to put my printing plate up here. You need a piece of drawing paper and a cup of water with the sponge. Now you can see the sponge has been, had better days, but really all you need is that when you squeeze it out, it's going to be pretty clear. And I'm going to squeeze it out a little bit because I don't want it dripping wet and I'm going to lightly brush my paper and get my paper wet. I'm going to hold it with one hand and lightly brush the water on. Now if I don't squeeze the, you can see I have some dirty fingers. You want to wash your fingers probably before you do this step. Um, if I don't clean it off, if I don't brush it on too evenly, I'll get big chunks and it'll be hard. My paper might fall apart. Also, you can always add water. So I'm going to put the paper face down on my Colograph. I'm going to try to not let it move once it's down. I'm going to press it down and I'm going to start to see some color push through. Now, if I see that I have a really dry spot, I can take my sponge again and I can lightly tap water on to where I know that it needs to pick up color. Careful not to move your Colograph because you really want your printing plate and your paper because you really want a clean print. So once I feel like I can see a lot of my color through my picture, I am going to give it one more press. Ooh, maybe the longer I leave it on there, the better it's going to look. So I might press it with my fingers, make sure I get all of those spots with the color. Okay, when I feel pretty good about it, my color is really coming through now. Lift it up from a corner, and there is my print. Now see, if I do too much water, it might start to run together. So if I have a rack or something, like a cookie sheet rack, I might try to put this on there so that the colors don't run together any more than they have to. Um, but that is my print. So you can see that from, and I can just clean this off and use it again, from this color graph I can do rubbings and I can do marker prints. You can see another marker print that I did earlier with different colors. So you see there are lots of different ways that you can use your color graph to make prints and reliefs and rubbings.